You most likely clicked on this video because general maths was your least favorite subject in high school. And all your life until now, you've done everything you can to avoid numbers. But somehow, as a UX designer, you're told you cannot rely on your gut feelings anymore. Instead, you need to learn how to look at these numbers to do your job well. So I'm here to make your life easier. I will show you three very practical real world ways to use Google Analytics, which is one of the most popular analytics tools to make better decisions in your UX and UI designs. But before we dive into it, let me explain to you when Google Analytics is actually useful. So when you go ahead and type a domain into the search bar and you hit enter, there are two types of websites you actually visit. Websites and then web apps. Now websites are those that don't require authentication, which is just a fancy word for saying setting up an account. For example, my online portfolio. It doesn't require people to create accounts. Therefore, it's a website. Just remember, in most cases, a website will have the goal or objective to either drive inquiries, leads, or even sales. For example, when someone visits my portfolio, the goal could be to get more inquiries or leads for maybe brand partnerships or project inquiries. Now, web apps, on the other hand, they require authentication. So they thrive when users create an account and engage on their platform. For example, think about Facebook, LinkedIn, or even YouTube. These platforms are a little different to websites as they have the goal to drive engagement instead of just leads and inquiries. Uploading a video on YouTube, hitting the like button on Facebook, leaving a comment, and even connecting with your friends. Now, because the objectives of a website and a web app are a little bit different, the behaviors of the users are also different, which means the tools that we use to track them are also a little bit different. So that's why Google Analytics is a great free tool by Google to track analytics to your websites. It does okay for web apps, but there are better tools out there for those specific use cases. So instead of showing you random parts of GA, and pretending I know what I'm talking about, we'll focus on three real world scenarios and I'll also explain to you why they are so important. Now, first, where are people coming from? Second, where are they landing? And third, where are people visiting and also converting? To understand where people are coming from, you can head over to reports and then under life cycle, acquisition, traffic acquisition. As you can see with this graph and these data points, you can see the amount of traffic that is coming from either an organic search, which is something that you would see when people search from Google and they land on your website, direct traffic, which is people who are directly coming to your website domain, organic video, referrals, and also organic social. So this is extremely useful and I'll explain to you why. So you may be thinking, why is this even important? Well, let's say you have designed a landing page for a client, which is not getting any sales. Instead of jumping straight into designs and using your despicable gut feelings to fix anything, it's always good to take a step back and maybe approach it with this more strategic approach. So by starting at the top of the funnel, for example, as a designer for this project, you might assume that everyone is coming from a Google search and they're landing onto your website. But after taking a look at Google Analytics, you actually realize the marketing department put out an ad on Instagram saying there is a 20% discount. But when they land on the sales page, there is no actual mention of a discount. This is just one of many scenarios of when understanding where people come from can help you make more strategic design decisions. Oh, and by the way, I will be launching a free crash course on data and analytics for designers. Well, I'll dive deeper into more advanced tactics that will actually help you make better design decisions that equate to real revenue for your stakeholders and clients. So if you're interested in learning more about this topic, be sure to drop your email in the offer link below. You'll be the first to know once it's ready. Now to understand where people are actually landing on your website, which once again, it's not a visit. A visit 
can be determined based on whatever pages that they visit. A landing page is when someone, for example, makes a search for the designership and they click a link in the search results and then they land on a page that is treated differently to a visit. So the landing page means landing on the page from somewhere else. So you can find landing pages based on reports under engagement, under landing page. You can see from here, you'll be able to see all the different pages of your website and the number of sessions, the number of unique users, which is unique number of people. So this is extremely useful and I'll explain to you why. So why is this important? Now, a very common request from clients and stakeholders is to help them find or suggest areas of improvement on their website because they have a goal of increasing sales and making more money. Now, without analytics, you would simply be using your undesirable gut feelings. So instead, you can refer to landing pages on GA to see where people are actually landing on your website. To be clear, a landing page is different to a visited page. A landing page specifically refers to when someone does a search on Google, for example, and they land on a particular page on your website. Knowing where most of the traffic is landing helps us, you and I as designers, in making better informed decisions when it comes to setting priorities. And this is the money-making skill that most designers don't have. So for example, you might realize there are 5,000 people landing on product A landing page, 1,000 people landing on product B landing page, and then 10,000 people landing on product C landing page. This might not give you the definitive answer, but as you can see, it's your first step to assessing your options and then finally becoming that data-informed designer that actually gets you paid more. So remember, your goal is to maximize your chances of helping the business make more money. And in doing so, business people, which are your clients and your stakeholders, they need data to make them feel cozy and safe. So if you really had to pick just one page to design and optimize, and you recommend them the suggestion that the 10,000 people opportunity seems much more opportunistic than the 1,000 one, then you've got the answer. Now to be clear, visits are generally referred to as vanity metrics, meaning it's not that useful on its own. But this was just an example, and we will build on top of this metric by combining it with another metric, which I'll talk about in the next example. The final real world scenario is where people are visiting and how many people are actually converting. There are many different places in GA where you can understand where your users are currently converting and making sales or making a purchase. But one example would be under the report section, under events, or oh sorry, engagement and events. You can see that there are all these different types of events that trigger when someone actually triggers them. For example, right now, I can see how many people have triggered the blog post scroll 50, which means that they've scrolled 50% of the article or they've scrolled 75% of the article. And this gives me a good understanding of on a mass scale, not on a visual style scale, but on a data scale when there are thousands of people without having to watch recordings of every single user, I can see on a very top high level how many people are actually reading or getting to the end of all our articles, which is a great sort of comparison. When people are engaging, when people are viewing, when people are visiting the website for the first time, all these events are stored within GA, which you can actually use and manipulate and add as a filter to different pages. So if you were to visit a landing page and apply a filter for a specific event, you can actually see the number of people who maybe have scrolled 50% on a specific landing page. You can also create different events such as purchasing, which is somewhat a conversion or a sale. And these will populate the conversion section of the website. And once again, you can see that there is an ad filter up here. And the great thing about this is all these different events that you are creating, you can apply the filter to all the different pages of your website. Why is this important? Now, similar to the previous example, there are many times when your client or your stakeholder will task you to help them uncover opportunities to increase sales, leads, and engagement. 
So let's go back to the previous example of 5,000 people landing on product A landing page, 1,000 people landing on product B landing page, and 10,000 people landing on product C landing page. With just the visit count alone, you can't truly make the best decision because it doesn't give you the full picture. Visits are a vanity metric, which means that they just make you feel good. What's more important than just the visit count is the conversion rate. And to calculate the conversion rate, you divide the number of sales or leads by the total number of visits and then multiply that by 100. For example, out of 5,000 people landing on product A, how many people actually made a purchase? Now let's say 100 people made a purchase on product A. That would equate to a conversion rate of 2%. Now product B landing page received 1,000 visits and 200 people made a purchase. That is a conversion rate of 20%. Product C landing page received 10,000 visits and 800 people made a purchase. So have a think about it. What would the conversion rate be? I'll give you five seconds. And if you get this one right, without using a calculator, I'll give you the permission to tell your old maths teacher to just shut the front door. Now the conversion rate is 8%. So with these insights, have a think about it. Which page would you recommend optimizing first if we wanted to see some really quick results for our online store. Have a think about it. Now, this was a little bit of a trick question because there are some advanced considerations to be made. Now, first off, I personally would never have made a decision just on the data alone. I'd always assess the design. But just for example's sake, here's what I'm thinking. I would probably go with product A. As long as I believe I could start getting sales with some very easy changes to the page. Even if I could go from 2 to 3%, a 1% increment of 5,000 people would equate to 50 additional sales. And from my experience, 2% is a fairly low conversion rate. So I think it's very achievable. But once you get to around 5 to 8%, all the easy wins and quick changes are normally exhausted. So it actually requires a bit more work which means trying to increase 1% on a page that's already converting at 8% can be more challenging and require more resources, even though there are a lot of visits to play with. To be clear, when making decisions, you must always, always evaluate the data and the designs before making any final calls. Now, these three scenarios are barely even scratching the surface for data and analytics for UX designers. There's so much more juicy stuff, especially when it comes to web apps. But let me tell you this, after being in the industry for 14 years, transitioning from junior UX designer and now somewhat of an investor and educator, I still look at these three basic data points every day for my own businesses and investee companies. But I really do hope this helped you give you a practical insight into how you can start using these tools to make better design decisions that can actually get you paid for because this is the stuff that your stakeholders and your clients really want to see. And once again, if you're looking to learn more about data analytics for designers so you can start moving up the ranks, then I will be launching a crash course. So feel free to drop your email and you'll be the first to know and this will be absolutely free. So with that said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe for the Die Hard fans. And if you want to keep learning, you should definitely check out this video. Yeah.